Hello and welcome to this video that goes through exercise 7D, questions 16 to 20 of the LXLAS maths textbook. So for question 16, we're going to prove that the quadrilateral 2, 1, 5, 2, 4, minus 1 and 1, minus 2 is a rhombus. So we're trying to prove it, so I think the first thing we should do is, is just work out what sort of determines what a rhombus is. So a rhombus is a four-sided shape. So it's a quadrilateral, um, and one of the key things it has is that it has four equal sides, but it does not have a. Uh, but the angles are not ninety degrees. So that is what distinguishes a rhombus from, let's say, a, a square or a rectangle. So, in that bearing that in mind, basically what we need to prove is we need to prove that the sides. So all sides are equal, and we need to prove that the angles are not 90 degrees. So to do that, the only way that we can do that is to prove that the um, that there is no perpendicular uh, sides. Um, if you're really struggling with this question, you could always draw out the question. Um, you may not want to do this in the exam because of time purposes. But uh, in these practical questions, it might be used to give you a good idea. So we've got point A, which is that x is 2, y is 1. We've got point B, which is that uh, x is 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, and y is 2. We've got point C, which is that 1, 2, 3, 4, and minus 1. And we've got point D, which is at 1 and minus 2. So this gives you your rhombus. One thing as well is that you could also argue that this looks like a parallelogram. So therefore you could also want to prove that um, uh, none of the sides are parallel. Um, or would you want that first parallel? Um, oh no, it's fine. Do you want the sides? Oh, stop. Parking out. Hello and welcome to this video that goes through exercise 7D, questions 16 to 20 of the Edexo AS Pure Maths textbook. So question 16 is prove that the quadrilateral A21, B52, C4-1 and D1-2 is a rhombus. So first of all, I would you want to define what exactly makes a rhombus um, so that you know what you're looking for to how to prove it. So for a rhombus, um, a rhombus is obviously a four-sided shape. Um, one of the key things about a rhombus is that it has equal sides and that none of the angles are 90 degrees. That does mean that two sides will be parallel. So you've got two sides, uh, well, two sets of sides that are parallel. Oops. Um, so that's kind of what you're looking for here now. The fact that equal sides, we can measure that through the distance. And then all of the angles, we can check the um, for perpendicular lines. Um, for this one, we can do that through finding the gradient. Because we can also show that two sides are parallel because I'll have the same gradient. And then you can measure, you can compare the two gradients um, that you would, should get to determine whether they are um inverse or well, negative inverse of each other which would imply that they are per um, perpendicular so first of all what a good thing to do is to draw out um, your situation so if we plot the points uh, so it's 2 and 1 for A uh, 5 and 2 for B uh, 4 and minus 1 for C and 1 and minus 2 for D so this is the shape that you end up with. Again, in the exam, you might not want to spend time doing this, but it might, it's useful to do when you're solving these problems. Um, so the first thing we want to do is we could find the distance between the sides. Um, so drawing it out means it's quite easy to find what the distance is going to be. 
um, which one do we need? So we want to find the distance between A and B. To find the distance, we use the distance formula, um, which is equal to, so distance is equal to the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So again, pick either the points. So usually I pick the first point as the x1, y1, and the second point as x2, y2. So here, x2 is going to be 5 from the b, and x1 is uh, 1 from the a. And then y2 is going to be 2 minus 1 squared. From there, we plug it in our numbers into our calculator. So 5 minus 2 is 3, and 2 minus, um, 2 minus 1 is 1. So that's going to give you a horrible number directly on the calculator, but gives you root 10 um, as an answer. So we can leave that in exact form because that's the best way to leave it. We can then do BC, that's the next one we have, so BC, so C is X2 is 4, and then B is minus 5 squared, plus um, C is Y2, so minus 1 minus 2 squared. Again, this is equal to root 10, 4 minus 5 squared is minus 1 squared, which is 1, and then minus 1 minus 2 is minus 3 squared, which is 9. And then the next one, again, you've got to prove all the sides, it's a bit laborious, so we do CD. Um, which is 1 minus 4 squared plus minus 2 minus minus 1 squared. Again, that just leaves it to root 10. And then the last one we have is dA. dA is equal to the square root of um, uh, 2 minus 1 all squared um, plus uh, 1 minus minus 2 all squared. And again, that's equal to root 10. So therefore, we have shown that all sides are equal. Then the next step that we have is we have, um, so we've done the distances, now we want to find the gradients. So we can see from our diagram that it's likely that A and B, A, B and D, C are going to be parallel, and A, D and B, C are going to be parallel. So now we're going to prove that so now we're going to find the gradient. So we're going to find the gradient of AD. Again, the gradient is change in Y over change in X, which is equal to Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. So the gradient of AD um, is going to be minus 2 minus 1 divided by um, 1 minus 2. So the gradient of the line AD is going to equal minus 2 minus 1 is minus 3 divided by minus 1, so it's equal to 3. Um, and then we're going to test that with uh, CB. And so CB is equal to, um, so it's going to be 2 minus minus 1 divided by uh, 5 minus 4, so 2 minus minus 1 is equal to 3, 5 minus 4 is equal to 1, that's equal to 3. So therefore, AD and CB are parallel. And then the next one that we have is going to be, so we're going to check the gradient of AB. So AB is going to be um, 2 minus 1 divided by 5 minus 2, which is equal to 1 over 3. And then we do the gradient, again, of DC. So the gradient of DC is going to be uh, minus 2 minus minus 1, divided by um, 1 minus 4. So minus 2, this is minus 2 plus 1, divided by 1 minus 4. Minus 2 plus 1 is minus 1 divided by minus 3, which is equal to a third. So therefore, AB and DC are parallel. And then the last thing that we need to check is that um, there's any right angles, uh, perpendicular lines. So we can prove that by saying a third times 3 is equal to 1. So therefore, there are no perpendicular lines.
so therefore shape is a rhombus and that is your answer for question 16 Question 17, prove that a minus 5, 2, b minus 3, minus 4, and c, 3, minus 2 are vertices of an isosceles right angle triangle. So an, an isosceles right angle triangle, um, so first of all is a triangle, so we need to prove um, that there's three distinct sides. Um, the second thing we need to prove is the right angle. Um, so to do that, there must be two sides that are perpendicular and then essentially the sides that are perpendicular if it's an isosceles right angle triangle then this angle here and this angle here have to equal each other that's not very helpful we can't do that to prove that one necessarily it's actually easier if we prove that the two sides that come off the right angle that lead to it are also equal in length um, so Again, we want to find several key things here. First of all, we want to find the gradients of the lines. We also want to find the distances of the lines. Um, and we also want to prove, yeah, essentially in the gradients part as well, we want to prove that they're perpendicular and also that they're different. And proving that they're different means that you prove that there's three distinct sides. So again, you can draw out your um, situation and that will hopefully make it easy for you to determine, um, like pick the sides basically to prove. So the first we've got is minus 5 and 2, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and up to 2. Uh, then the next one we've got is minus 3, minus 4, so minus 3, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4. And the next one we have is 3 and minus 2. So we end up with a triangle that looks like this. Again, this hasn't proven anything, we've just drawn in our shape um, so that we can um, that, that basically determine what we're going to do with this next. So B minus 3 minus 4, C 3 and minus 2. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find the gradients um, so that they're distinct. So we're going to find AC first. So AC, again, the gradient is changing Y with a change in x, so y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, and I'll take the coordinates of the second point to always be the second letter, and the coordinates y1, x1 to be from the first letter. So here, for c, it's going to be minus 2, uh, minus 2, divided by 3, uh, minus minus 5, so minus 2 minus 2 is minus 4, 3 plus 5, so that's going to equal um, minus 4, divided by 8, which is equal to minus a half. Then we've got uh, CB. So CB um, is going to be uh, changing Y, so it's going to be minus 4, minus minus 2, divided by uh, minus 3, minus 3. And so that one would lead to uh, minus 4, minus minus 2, so it's minus 4 plus 2, minus 3 minus 3 is minus 6. So it's equal to minus 2 over minus 6, which is equal to a third. So CB is equal to a third, and then we've got BA. So BA is equal to changing Y, so it's going to be uh, 2 minus minus 4, divided by um, X, so it's going to be minus 5 minus minus 3. So 2 minus minus 4 is equal to um, 2 plus 4 and then minus 5 plus 3, 2 plus 4 is 6, minus 5 plus 3 is equal to minus 2, so that's going to equal to minus 6 over 2, which is minus 3. So we've proven there that the, essentially that the lines are not collinear, so they're not part of the same line, so therefore ABC is a triangle, from here then we want to prove that we have uh, perpendicular sides and we can have that because we can see that CB times BA in terms of gradients, so a third times minus 3 is equal to minus 1. So therefore CB and BA are perpendicular. So 
so therefore there is a right angle and the last thing we want to check is whether they're isosceles now we can sort of cheat a little bit on this one because we can work out the distances so CB and BA because we know that this part here is going to be the right angle so we can do a little bit less work so if we work out the distance of BC so that's going to equal so the distance formula is equal to the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared so this one here is going to be c so it's going to be minus 2 minus minus 4 all squared plus 3 minus minus 3 squared uh, and then plugging that in is going to be so plug that directly in the calculator minus 2 minus plus 4 squared plus 3 plus 3 or squared and that gives an answer of 2 root 10 and then we also have the distance AB so the distance AB is going to be equal to um, minus 4 minus 2 squared plus um, minus 3 minus minus 5 squared and then plugging that in uh, we're going to get the square root again of um, so this time it's minus 4 minus 2 squared and then it will be minus 3 plus 3 all squared um, and we get different distances that is uh, minus 3 plus 5 squared minus 4 minus 2 squared oh I put the wrong uh, answer in the calculator so always check that your numbers match up um, so here, yeah, there we get 2 root 10. So that's equal to 2 root 10. So therefore, the distances of AB equals BC. Uh, and therefore, you have shown... So your last one, therefore, is that this must be an isosceles right-angled triangle. Uh, and that is your final answer for question number 17. Okay, question 18, a circle has the equation x minus 1 squared plus y squared equals k, where k is greater than 0. The straight line with the equation y equals ax cuts the circle at two distinct points. Prove that k is greater than a squared over 1 plus a squared. So this one is quite a difficult one, to be fair, but it's a proof question, but it's quite straightforward if you remember back to your circle rules. So in terms of extracting information from the question, so we know that the centre of the circle is 1, 0, and it's got a radius equal to uh, root k, uh, and it's a, there's a straight line with y equals ax and cuts the circle at two distinct points. So it's something like that, at two distinct points. We don't know where, and it's got a centre, um, 1, 0. Now here, that doesn't tell us very much, but what it does give us the indication that we want to do is, if it's at two distinct points that suggests that we're going to use b squared minus 4ac is less than zero because two distinct points usually in implies that we use the discriminant so for that it suggests that we want to get a quadratic of some kind so what the idea here is that we substitute in our equation y equals ax into our circle equation we're then going to that we're going to assume we're then going to create a quadratic and we're going to say that quadratic has two distinct points to imply that this line here crosses the circle at two separate x values so there should be two solutions for x so for here we're going to start and say it's x minus one squared plus replace y with ax squared equals k and then we're going to expand this out so it becomes x squared minus 2x plus 1 plus a squared x squared is equal to k then from here we're going to collect all the terms and move everything over to the left hand side so we get a standard quadratic so x squared plus a squared x squared so it becomes 1 plus a squared x squared and then minus 2x plus 1 minus k is equal to 0. from here we're then going to use b squared minus 4ac is less than 0 because now we've got a quadratic so from here we have a equals 1 plus a squared b equals minus 2 and c is equal to 1 minus k. From here then we replace our terms so b squared becomes minus 2 squared minus 4 times 1 plus a squared 
times 1 minus k is less than 0. Minus 2 squared is equal to 4. Then we do minus 4, and then we expand this out. So 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times minus k is minus k. a squared times 1 is a squared. And a squared times minus k is minus a squared k is less than 0. Um, we can then um, ex uh, expand out the equation. So we've got 4 minus 4. So we get 4 minus 4. Uh, so expand the bracket by times it by minus 4. So 4 times 4 minus 4 times 1, which is minus 4. Minus 4 times, sorry, so it should be minus 4 times 1, which is minus 4. Minus 4 times k, which is plus 4k. Minus 4 times a squared, so it's going to be minus 4a squared. And minus 4 times a squared k squared, which is going to be plus 4a squared k is greater than 0. From here, we can do two things to factor our equation. First of all, 4 minus 4 is 0. And then notice that the remaining terms all have a factor of 4. So we can divide through by 4 and cancel it. So we're left with k minus, uh, no, cancel the 4. So k minus a squared plus a squared k is less than 0. Now, if we look back what our goal is, always look back if you're not sure, we want to ensure that we have k as a subject of our formula. So we're going to move the term without the k, which is the a squared, to the right-hand side. So we get k plus a squared k is less than 0. And then here we're going to take out common factor of k. So it's k 1 plus a squared. Oh, sorry, it's less than a squared. So it's k 1 plus a squared is less than a squared. And then we can divide both sides by 1 plus a squared to get k is less than a squared over 1 plus a squared. And that is our answer to our question for question 18. Oh, no, hang on. So we've got b squared. Ah, oh, fucking hell. Wake up. It's obviously not less than 0. Absolutely ridiculous. Start again. Wake up. Focus. Stop fucking well. Worrying about other shit. <sighs> okay, question 18. A circle has equation x minus 1 squared plus y squared equals k, where k is greater than 0. The straight line L with the equation y equals ax cuts the circle at two distinct points. Prove that k is greater than a squared over 1 plus a squared. So first of all, let's extract some information from the question. So the first thing, the equation, it has x minus 1 squared. So that implies that the centre of the circle is 1 and y squared implies that it's 0 with a radius equal to root k. But the next thing it says is the straight line with the equation y equals ax, cuts the circle at two distinct points. So the fact that it says two distinct points implies that b squared minus 4ac is going to be greater than 0. And that implies that we need to make a quadratic of some kind. So therefore, what we can do is we can substitute our y, y equals ax into our original circle equation and then expand and make a quadratic from there. And then we can use the fact that there's two distinct points, so there must be two solutions to this equation when we, sub when we substitute our line in. That would imply that there's two points that meet on the circle, so something like this. So from here, the first thing that we do is we're going to replace our y in our circle with a straight line. So it becomes x minus 1 squared plus ax squared is equal to k. Then we're going to expand everything out, so it becomes x squared minus 2x plus 1 plus a squared x squared is equal to k. And then we're going to move everything to the left hand side, so it becomes x squared plus a squared x squared minus 2x plus 1 plus uh, minus k equal to 0. Then from here we can just tidy up our terms. So here, for example, we can say it's 1 plus a squared x squared minus 2x plus 1 minus k is equal to 0. From here, we're going to apply a formula, b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0. And from here, we know that our a term is equal to 1 plus a squared. Our b term is equal to minus 2. And our c term is 1 minus k. Substituting our numbers in, we get minus 2 squared minus 4 times 1 plus a squared times 1 minus k. So our c is greater than 0. From here, um, we are going to expand our terms. So it becomes 4 minus 4 times, bracket, 1 times 1 is 1, 
1 times minus k is minus k, a squared times uh, 1 is plus a squared, and a squared times minus k is equal to minus a squared k, which is greater than 0. Then we can expand out our bracket, so it becomes 4 minus 4, minus 4 times 1 is minus 4, minus 4 times k is plus 4k, minus 4 times a squared is minus 4a squared, and then minus 4 is plus 4a squared k, and all this is greater than 0. From here we can do 4 minus 4, which is 0, so we're left with 4k minus 4a squared plus 4a squared k is greater than 0. And then notice that we have a common term of 4, so we can divide by 4, and we're left with my k minus a squared plus a squared k is greater than 0. Notice in our equation that we want to have k as the subject, so we're going to move any term without k, which is the minus a squared, to the other side. So we get k plus a squared k is greater than a squared. And then we're going to take a factor of k out of our equation, so it's going to be k 1 plus a squared is greater than a squared. Then the final step is we divide, so it's k a squared over 1 plus a squared. And that is your final answer to question 18. Question 19, prove that the line 4y minus 3x plus 26 equals 0 is a tangent to the circle of x plus 4 squared plus y minus 3 squared equals 100. So, to prove that it's a tangent, um, uh, the, what I would do here is, so we know we've got the straight line, we know that it's going to be the tangent to the circle at some point, so we know that um, to prove that it's tangent to the circle, we know that the, um, we know that the radius and the line are going to be perpendicular to each other at the point of intersection. Um, so one step we could do here is we can find where the point of intersection is um, and then we could solve that. Um, I don't think what else that we could do. We could also prove that the only time, so if it's a tangent to the circle, it is also only touches the curve or the circle in one position. So therefore there is only one solution um, to the equation if we place y or x and, and substitute it into the to circle. So I think that second option is the most effective option here. Uh, so that's why it's important to have a think about your situation before you go ahead and prove it because I think the radius one will be a longer way to prove. Well here we can say that it only touches in one position so therefore only one solution. So here, the first thing we want to do is we want to rearrange this first equation, this line. So it's 4y minus 3x plus 26 equals 0. Uh, and then we're going to rearrange as 4y equals 3x minus 26. So y is equal to 3x minus 26 over 4. From here, we're going to substitute that into our equation, which is going to be x plus 4 squared plus 3x minus 26 over 4 uh, minus 3 or squared is equal to 100. And then this where is where things get, um, we're going to get a nasty quadratic here. Um, so we'll start with the left hand side, we expand out x plus 4 squared. So here we're going to get uh, x squared plus 4x plus 4x, so plus 8x plus 16. And then on this side here, so I'm going to take this separately and deal with this so we um, don't get it all confused here. So 3x minus 26 over 4 minus 3 all squared. So this is going to be 3x over 4. And then minus 26 divided by 4 minus 3 is minus 9.5, uh, which is minus 19 over 2 all squared. Then from here, I'm going to expand this out, so it's going to be, uh, so again, it's the same as writing 3x over 4 minus 19 over 2, 3x over 4 minus 19 over 2. So the first thing we do is we do 3x over 4 times 3x over 4, so it's going to be plus 9x squared over 16. Then we do um, 3 
over 4x times minus 19 over 2. And we're going to do that twice. So we're going to get um, minus 57 over 4x. Then the last step is going to do uh, minus 19 over 2 times uh, minus 19 over 2, which gives you 361 over 4. If you can, leave your answer in fractions. It makes it a lot easier to deal with. And that's all equal to 100. So here I'm going to group all the terms and move everything over to the left hand side. So it's x squared plus 9 over 16x squared plus 8x minus 57 over 4x plus 16 plus 361 over 4 minus 100 is equal to 0. So from here we do 1 plus 9 over 16 which is equal to uh, 25 over 16x squared. And we do 8 minus 57 over 4, which gives you minus 25 over 4x. And then we do 16 plus 361 over 4 minus 100, which is equal to 25 over 4, which equals 0. From here, we can times everything through by 16. And if we times everything by 16, you get 25x squared. And then 25 over 4 times 16 is equal to 100, so minus 100x plus 100 is equal to 0. Then we can divide everything by 25, so we get x squared minus 4x plus 4 is equal to 0. Now, obviously, from here, you could have um, you could solve this in the calculator. You could have solved it in the calculator at this point here, uh, but sometimes it's faster just to quickly simplify if you can. Um, but it's, it's up to you at that point. So from here, you can solve in your calculator, you can do that, or you can factorise it yourself. Um, for the proof questions, it's good to show the factorising every single step, but I don't think it's necessary. But here, you're going to say it's x minus 2 squared, so x equals 2 is the only solution. Now this is important because it suggests that it only crosses at one point. If it only crosses at one point, it must be a tangent to the circle. So therefore, the line is a tangent to the circle as only crosses in one position. And that's the end of the question, that you've proven that it's a tangent to the circle. Final question of this video is question 20. The diagram shows a square and four congruent right angle triangles. Use the diagram to prove that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now this question is quite difficult to approach um, without knowing a lot of information. So the key thing here is to write down what you know at all times. So the first thing we have, I'm going to label the square. So we've got the square, which is 1. So the, the empty square here, the area we know of that square is going to be equal to c squared. And that might be helpful because we've got in our answer here c squared. So that could be could useful. We could come back to that. So another thing that we can do is the areas of the blue triangle. So the blue triangle has an area equal to, um, so a half a b. And the total of the blue triangles in this one is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's going to be 4 times a half a b. So that's equal to 2 a b. Again, that might be useful. The last thing we know is that we can, another thing that we could know is that we also know that this side is B, this side is A, this side is B, this side is A, this side is B, this side is A. And we know that because it says there's congruent right angle triangles, so it means they're the same. So therefore, we know that the side is this, is going to be A plus B. So the area of the whole square is going to equal a plus b times a plus b. Let me substitute that in. That's going to be equal to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Now this is the area of the whole square. Now here we're trying to relate a squared plus b squared equals c squared and I can see already some relations. We already know that our c squared is the area of our white triangle. And we know that the area of the whole square is a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. But notice here that we've got a 2ab and a 2ab. 
So how can we get those related to each other? Well, we know that the area of the whole square must equal the area of the white square plus the area of the blue triangles. So all of the, or so the area of the four blue triangles, we could say. So the area of the whole square is equal to c squared. Uh, no, sorry, it does not. That's a lie. The area of the whole square is equal to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. The area of the white square is equal to c squared. And the area of the two triangles is equal to 2a plus b. If we subtract 2a plus b from both sides, we get a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And that gives us our final answer for question 20. That brings to the end of this video. If you have any further questions, please let me know.